So today we talk about a subject almost everybody knows, management. You either are a manager or work for a manager. It's not a subject that we don't have certain ideas and ideals about. When we refer to management, we often say an effective manager, or efficient manager, or even a bad manager. When we talk about a good manager, though, we often just think of they did their job well. I take a different interpretation of what a good manager is and should be. In fact, the aspiration that I have is that we hire a person who's decent and honorable and then train them how to manage. So you have somebody who's good by virtue of being a decent and honorable person, and then they have the skills to use that goodness for constructive aims as opposed to using it for destructive aims. I believe the central most important aspect of a good manager is that they're good. Again, a decent and honorable person. Hopefully, in the next couple of minutes, I'll convince you that that's true. If not, hopefully we'll give you some thoughts to ponder as you determine what an effective manager is and how to create that model that other people will follow to be effective in the management profession that they have chosen. With that, we'll start with the quote. One of my favorite came from Muhammad Ali. He said, if you think the same at 50 that you did at 20, then you've wasted 30 years of your life. Always enjoyed that. Basically says that you never stop learning. You can always gain additional knowledge and wisdom. Hopefully you use that knowledge and wisdom to think and be better. Hence this presentation. Our thought is at the end of the next minutes that we spend, You'll be able to look back and say, you know, this makes sense or that doesn't make sense. I'll change my philosophy here. I won't change it there. Hopefully it gives you something to think about. Just maybe at the end you'll say, yeah, that's right. The central aspect that a manager, the central trait that a person should have to be a manager is they should be a good person first. We'll train them to do the rest later. They've got to be a good person first. So what are the traits that make a good manager? There's basically six. They first like what they do. Second, they know their job. Third, they have exceptional organizational skills. Fourth, they work hard. Five, they make work fun. And six, they're a good person. We're going to go over each of these in the next few minutes. But there may be a question out there that some of you have, which is, what's the difference between a manager and a leader? Are they the same thing? So before we get to the very first aspect of what makes a manager good, we'll talk about the differences between a manager and a leader. Because they are, and there will continue to be, definitive differences between the two. First, leaders. Leaders determine where to go. Managers determine how to get there. Leaders focus on the future while managers focus on the present. Leaders are often rebellious, and the term rebel certainly has a connotation for those who are leaders. I think just about anybody, whether they're good or bad, Elon Musk is somebody who's seen as a leader. Again, good or bad. Mark Zuckerberg, certainly one seen as a leader. Managers are more conformist and proceduralist. In fact, it's hard for us to name somebody who we think is an effective manager. We often just concentrate on leaders. That's because managers tend to be more practical and measured, where leaders are much more daring and adventuresome. Can they be the same? Of course. When you look at somebody like Steve Jobs, he was both a leader and a manager when they started Apple. When they got bigger, it got to be more difficult for him to perform the two functions. Instead of just dreaming about where the organization was going, he actually had to determine how to get there as well. It made it very tough for him. Most people forget that when he started Apple, a few short years later, he was fired. He was fired because the organization wasn't working. Some years later, he came back and and ran Apple both as the visionary, but also as more of a practical aspect. But it's harder as the organization gets bigger to do both sides. So now we know the differences between a manager and a leader, and that allows us to move on to those six aspects. And the first is to like what you do. It's very difficult to be successful at something if you don't like what you do. It's like chocolate. Most people like eating chocolate, it's something that's pleasurable for them. If you don't like eating chocolate, it's going to be difficult for you to enjoy the experience. The same with management. You've got to like what you do. Those that are most happy and content and excited and 
fulfilled are those who truly like what they do. Yet most really don't like what they do. And they either have a lack of ambition, a lack of courage, in other words, to do the right things, or to follow an off a treacherous path. Or there's people who have an unwillingness to sacrifice, or they have a lack of encouragement in their lives. And as a result, they either don't follow that path that they should, or if they're along that path, it's not a path that they like. Some people take a job because they need a job, not because they necessarily want that job. And the hope is, if you're going into management, that you took that job because you liked that job. So you have to like what you do. The good managers are those that really do like what they do. How do you like what you do? Well, you assess your skills and you kind of search your heart and your soul, and you figure out where is my direction. There's many ways that you can find out what your direction is. You can read, you can talk to people, you can go to school, you can gain experience. All of those aspects help you hone in on the area that really offers you the most fulfillment in what you do. That's a quote to the right that says, doing what you like is freedom. Doing, liking what you do is happiness. We don't certainly enjoy freedom, but we also want to be happy. And so if you like what you do, it provides you with that happiness. The thrill of shared experiences in a field or industry that you like is incomparable. Liking what you do. The second aspect of a good manager is to know your job. This is fundamental, right? If I'm teaching you a subject, I certainly have to know the subject. If I want to lead in a certain direction, I have to know not only how to lead, but where to lead. So having some basics, basis, which we would call foundation, really is critical to being a manager of some distinction. Results matter. There's a sign behind me that says, actually, results matter. No matter what the effort you put in, you have to have results. Necessar we shouldn't necessarily judge by results, because sometimes we can't control the outcome as much as we can control the effort. And efforts and outcomes are certainly correlated, but not always. Sometimes, no matter what effort we expend, the results we expected didn't occur. Maybe the economy didn't do well. Maybe our employees didn't do as well as we wanted. Maybe somebody stole something from us. So effort and results are often not always correlated. But by knowing your job, the hope is that the results that you achieve would have a higher chance of correlation. So the foundation upon which results are achieved is the information, data, statistics, theory, stories, and experiences that you cumulatively know as knowledge. Without the right knowledge, decisions made and actions performed rely upon chance, circumstance, luck, all or ultimately lead to frustration, fiasco, and failure. Managers with a broader or greater depth of knowledge have a better chance to make more reasoned and intelligent decisions, whether that's hiring employees or developing a strategic plan. How do you do that? Really two principal areas, education and experience. Education provides that foundation to learn the often complex concepts in an increasingly uh, competitive global environment. That could be marketing, finance, IT, accounting, HR, whether it's motivation, public relations, no matter what it is, it provides you that basis. You know about it, but then you have to, you have to apply it. That's where experience comes in. Experience is the ability to gauge the effect, the impact, and the success of what you've learned into what we call the real world. Perfectly designed plans remain perfect until they're implemented. Then inevitably, adjustments must be made. And some people say, oh, I have a lot of experience and not enough education. I have a lot of education, not enough experience. Which is more important? Both are more important. Why are they important? Without education, one lacks the foundation to know what to do. Without experience, one lacks the wisdom to know how to do it. So you need both. You need the education so you know what could be done, and you need experience so that you know what should be done. But without that knowledge in your mind, then you have nothing to apply. It's like a painter without any ink. And that leads us to 
our third aspect, exceptional organizational skills. Managers get work done through other people. There's really no other way to say it. That's what they do. They are charged with not necessarily working hard themselves, but encouraging others to work hard. And that requires organizational skills. No matter the vision, strategic plan, or even the grandized dreams, unless a manager learns the right organizational skills, then these ambitions of an organization are rarely realized. They have to often translate unrealistic ambitions into workable plans. They have to determine the best person to perform each task. They have to ensure tasks are achieved also in a timely manner. So the three aspects that we need to learn in organizational skills are the ability to plan, the ability to delegate, and the ability to manage time. Planning is that focus for a hope for a future. Plans now are one to two years in length. Delegate says, I have all these tasks, now I have to find the best person to accomplish this task. And time management is important because everything we do in life is determined through the mechanism of time. If we miss certain deadlines, if we have an inability to meet certain obligations, that may be the factor that determines the success or failure of an organization. So exceptional organizational skills on behalf of a manager are quite important. Maybe of those the most is, as I mentioned, time. And so I want to talk about some things that we can do to better manage our time. I'll give you a couple of hints. One is to use small amounts of time. There's so many times we have five or ten minutes. And if we use those five or ten minutes best, then at the end of the day, that turns into an hour or two. It's amazing. Second is lists. Every day, I write down the most important things that I need to do that day. And here's the kicker. I start with the worst job I have that day. Either the most important or the worst. The one that I want to do least. You'll find that if you do your least liked task first thing in the day, you have a much better attitude the rest of the day. You have nothing to look forward to other than great things as opposed to that one task that you wish you didn't have to do. Start first with the worst task. That starts also with having a list. Those are some things that you can do to manage your time well as a manager, certainly as a person as well. We're getting ready to do number four, but I want to talk about if you have common skills, you get common pay. If you have uncommon skills, you get uncommon pay. As we look to create this model of a good manager, we have to remember that the better you are at your job, the more you're going to get paid. If money isn't the goal that you aspire to, then you certainly can have greater positions based on how well you do. We're hoping as we talk about the skills here today that you can adapt and adopt these skills so that it can improve upon your resume, not only in this job but in future jobs. You take these skills, you make yourself a better person, and then you have a better representation in the workplace. And as you do, you work hard. Fourth is to work hard. Uncommon skills are often the result of people who work hard because the world is replete with talented people who have not perfected or utilized their talent. They often serve as a cautionary tale of an unrealized promise of greatness. There's painters who never market their work for fear of criticism. There's writers who never publish because they fear failure. But always remember that the fear of failure and the fear of what other people think has really destroyed the ambitions of most people. When we talk about working hard, we often think about these three aspects. First was fear, second is talent, and third is superstar. I truly believe that it is not the employees in general that are most critical for an organizational success today. Instead, it is that superstar, maybe the lone superstar or a group of superstars. It is those people who think and act so differently than just about anybody else that they work with, that their ideas of the future and how it should be attained, those are the individuals that are most important to organizational success going forward. As we populate our organizations with even more robots, 
and artificial intelligence. We need, the, we need those singular individuals who think and act so differently. I remember um, some years ago watching um, Cindy Lauper in concert. And what's interesting about this kind of superstar unusual talent is that this is a person who was a high school dropout, bankrupt. Her career really wasn't succeeding, but she really believed in her talent. She had this kind of singular ability to think that this is something that I was destined to do. Some years later, she wrote a, 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 an album and sang. It had uh, four top five hits, the first ever to do that. It won a Grammy. She later won an Emmy and even a Tony. She is the only female to win a Tony for Best ori Original Score by herself. And she did it because she really believed in that talent that she had, and she became this superstar. It should not be surprising that her first album was called She's So Unusual, and it really launched her into superstardom. That's what we need in the organization. We need those people who are so committed to their talent that they never fear failure, never give up or give in, because they know that success is their destiny. That's who we need to find. That's the manager we need in our organization. Hard to find? Yes. Impossible to find? Absolutely not. Brings us to five, make work fun. So we move, move from work hard, right, to almost the total opposite, which is make work fun. Can you make people work hard, but then also make work fun? I think if you start as a manager, which is like what you do, we talked about that earlier, it all flows. We get work done through other people as managers. And if we can figure out how to get work done through other people in a way that they like, we have a great chance, a great chance of meeting our objectives. As we mentioned earlier, people enjoy doing something that brings them pleasure. There's some people that enjoy shopping. They take any opportunity to go shopping. And if they had a job where all they did was shop for other people, that to them would give their life great purpose. We actually call them personal shoppers. We in the organization as management need to figure out a way that we can make work fun. How do we do that? First, we show people that we care. Second is we make sure that we find the right person for the job. Third is that we make sure that we and they have the right attitude. It really comes down to those three aspects. Showing your care, people want to be around other people who have their best interests at heart. We'll see that next when we talk about a good person. Finding the right person, it's hard to find somebody um, who doesn't want a job and to convince them that this is the job for them. You have to start with some ambition, some hunger on a person to want to do something before you can then hone and mold that ability into that job. And having the right attitude is important. I've always believed that we don't have everything, but we have something. Everybody doesn't have everything, but everybody has something. And we have to learn to be appreciative of that something that we have. That's about having the right attitude. And it's quite important. A couple of aspects I talked about is about making the work fun. We talked about showing that you care. It's rare to find somebody who cares and wishes you well, maybe, in this world that we often think is cold. But you always find what you're looking for. And that's a key. So look for those who care about you. And those are the people that you want to be with and work for. Finding the right person for the job. There's legendary teams that have legendary pay players, but there's also teams that have great players, but they never become legendary teams. Why is that? They probably didn't find the right people who can work right together and accomplish the task. We don't want the contentious, unpredictive, unproductive workers because they create stress and salaries fall and promotions evaporate and morale suffers. We want somebody who, in general, has three aspects. They have an ability to do the job, which means they can. Second, they're motivated to do the job, which means they want to. And last, we put them in an environment where they will be able to be successful. 
And that's where management comes in. But if we don't start with somebody who can actually, who actually has the ability, and we don't start with somebody who actually wants to do the job, it's very difficult as a manager to create any type of environment that people will be successful. We can give you a computer and training and typing skills and even critical thinking skills, but if you don't have the ability to do it and you don't have the motivation to do it, no matter what type of organization you work for, you will not be successful. Subsequently, the organization will. That brings us to the right attitude, is that we have to eat right, we have to exercise, we have to have good things around us, whether it's movies, TVs, or music. We have to put ourselves in positions to be happy in situations that make us happy. Attitude is, is a critical aspect of making work fun. And that leads us to the sixth aspect, which is a good person. The most important attribute, the one that determines the success or failure of a manager, is the ability to be a good person, one who lives a decent and honorable life. First question is, how do you lead that decent and honorable life? I think there's five aspects that make somebody a good person. They're incredibly kind, uh, because we're drawn, drawn to basic goodness. Two is they, they control their destructive emotions. All of us have them. Not the same ones, but just about all of us are going to have one or, or more of these, whether it's we have insecurity, selfishness, greediness, self-interested, egotistical. There's others as well. But we have what I call these destructive human emotions, and if we don't control them, then it can be quite destructive for who and where we want to go. There's a saying that says, those consumed with evil do evil, those consumed with good do good. We want to be consumed with good and we want to control what is bad. The third aspect of a good person is someone who tells the truth. It determines your credibility and without which it's almost impossible to develop trusting and lasting relationships in the workplace or any place. Does what's right is for some people say, well, how do you know what's right? I always say, what's right is which advances the human condition, which advances our society. No, not just our family or our town, but our society. If it advances the basic nature of people, that's right. We would want everybody to do that because it's right. And lastly, always looks for the good. I have a saying that always look for the good along the road of life. And it really talks about attitude, which is our first, fifth aspect, attitude. It tells us about the need that we have to be positive and appreciative of all the good fortune that we have in our life. As I mentioned earlier, we may not have the same good fortune that other people have, but it's undeniable that each and every one of us has something to be fortunate about, whether it's our friends, our family, our health, our wealth. There's something in our lives different than other people that we should be grateful for. Those bas basic gratefulness and graciousness really underlie and underpin an attitude that at its conclusion allows us to say that we're, we're always looking for the good no matter what road we travel upon. I think it's really fundamental to being a good manager in, in general. Plato once said, be kind for everyone you meet is fighting a, hardy, a, hard, a harder battle. I never forgot that, and there was a great story about uncommon kindness. It was about this young boy um, who went to get ice cream, and he only had uh, a certain amount of money, and he wanted um, a sundae, and it was 50 cents. He didn't th thought that he could spend 50 cents for it, so he goes, well, what about just some ice cream? It says 35 cents, and the waitress was quite rude, knowing that here was a small boy, probably didn't have a lot of money, and she probably wasn't going to get a big tip. So he said, I'll just take the ice cream. And so she brought over the ice cream and then gave him his bill. It was 35 cents. Obviously, this was some years ago, 35 cents. And then he paid and left. He put the money on the counter. When the waitress went over, she saw that there was 50 cents on the counter so that he could have afforded the Sunday. But instead, he chose the ice cream because he knew that his ice cream would cost 35 cents and he would be able to give her a 15-cent tip. The moral of the story, there's genuine kindness in all we meet, if we only choose to look for it. Quite interesting. Looking for the good, 
really comes down to thinking the best, doing the best, and becoming the best. Again, the good can be found if only you so choose to look or search for it. That leads us to some beliefs that I have in relation to management. And also why it is possible and it's not impossible to be good. I do believe that we have far more power to control our future than others have to destroy it. I do believe that it's not what we're given that's important, but what you do with what you're given. And it's not where you start in life that matters, but where you end. And as we move forward with employment or just being a manager, I also firmly believe that if we can dream the impossible dream and be, term, de, be determined to achieve it, if we work hard, be kind, and never give up, and if we always look for the good, then we can become someone good and then do something great. That is our hope. That is our ambition. And hopefully, that hope continues. Because if we never abdicate our, uh, never abdicate our belief or abandon our hope that you can make something better, we can make something better, then you can make a difference in this world. Thanks, everybody.